Yes, yeah, so I mean, where, when did you first, and how did you first come to wanting to make music and play? I think I heard a Radiohead album. Okay. Which Radiohead album? I think it was the Benz. Mm. And That's a cracker. I mean, yeah. in terms of, I was like, the guitar. I, 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 you know, I like, I like the sound of this. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just booked my parents for a guitar when I was about, I think it was about 11, acoustic. Yeah. And then... Um, the, the interesting thing about that record is, is they're all songs. Like, oh, yeah. Um, it's real amazing. Song yeah. songs. Yeah. But that's, it's, I, I think with that, Ben's and OK Computer, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, they've been, I mean, I've overplayed them both to death. Mm -hmm. But it's like, for me, it was when I, when I first heard them, it was perfection of songwriting, weird noises weird that you noises, hadn't yeah. heard before, yeah. guitar being played in a way yeah. that you hadn't before. I mean, also the harmonies are just mm. insane. It's all alternative, but the melody through it as well. It's and just like, you listen to it now and it's, it still sounds exactly the... the it's timeless. It's timeless. timeless. That's timeless. That, and that, I think that is the, that's the key of it all. I think it is timeless to... Mm. Um, yeah, that was my first. It's quite, it it's quite an introduction, isn't it? Really, yeah. The bands. Yeah, oh god, yeah. So it's a bit of... like whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, and then I went. I went from there. Really, that. I mean, I had no concept of. Of you know who they were. They they could have been from the moon. You know, yeah, it was, it was just like. <gasps> you heard it was a noise, just a and, noise it and it resonated. Yeah, yeah to, to the. 11 year old child <laughs> but I was I was always very um perceptive to to uh, music yeah and always heard it uh, my, my parents aren't in any way musical really and you know the kind of radio rock FM maybe a bit of uh, Fleetwood Mac, maybe. Yeah. You know? I always remember that being on in the cassette in the car and pressing it and then then rewinding it to to listen to my favourite song. Yeah. And and uh, yeah. But I was always and I was always kind of humming melodies in my head mm. and to, but didn't know, really know why or why or how. <laughs> <laughs> Still don't really. But um, <laughs> but the the uh, yeah, the the Benz and OK Computer as well, and it was like wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was my, and then then I got a guitar and Nirvana, yeah, things like that. You know, just it's noisy. No, no, yeah. Good noise. And you had the first guitar was an acoustic guitar. Acoustic, yeah. And how long did it take you to get from that to? Until my next birthday, or well, Christmas, I was like, okay. I want an electric. And what was the electric? It was a PV something or other. Oh, the, yeah. what were they called? Raptor. Was it a Raptor? Raptor. Yeah. yeah, it was a Raptor. They won. Yeah. They, but they're, they're, like, they're kind of like the Yamaha Pacificas, which yeah. are, you know, entry-level things, but really good. Yeah. Um, you could, I mean, I know guys that have those, and they, they use them on sessions and things, and actually mm. still, it's, you know, fundamentally, they're wow. really cool. Uh, yeah, it's still in my, I think it's in my dad's loft somewhere. Really? You still got the acoustic? I have, that's, that's at home. Yeah. What, what, what was Brunswick. that? Brunswick. Brunswick. Yeah, it was probably like Chinese-made British company. <laughs> yeah, very, it's got a very Chinese name. Yeah, Brunswick. Brunswick. <laughs> um, yeah, that I still I still got that. It's still it's quite nice actually. It's mm. pretty um, decent action on it. No, terrible. Yeah. but um, you great for like slide. That, I like I love a high action, but um, yeah, yeah, wrist destroying yeah. actions. <laughs> so, did you have any? Any like lessons or anything, or was it? I, I think sort of I self taught. Um, I think I had like three. Uh, uh, my my mother's friend showed me like three chords, and I was away. Mm. And then I went to this um, kind of group lesson. Mm -hmm. I think like three times, but it was more of a social right. event than learning anything. Yeah. And then it, I, I mean, it was pure noise making from my point of view. And, what um, kind of age was that? 13, 14. Okay. Just, yeah, got a big muff and then was away, really. Yeah. Um, and how, what what were you listening to when you were, so you had Ben's OK Computer mm. and Nirvana Yeah, stuff. just playing along on 
to in the stereo in my that bedroom. teaches you a lot of things so much playing along. yeah mm. yeah yeah just you know power chord to, even if it was wrong it was, yeah, but it's like timing it's, is timing is so important yeah, yeah. so important yeah. yeah I yeah I mean that that was the fun I still remember it so vividly trying to I mean the internet wasn't really a thing so mm. tab you'd have to go yeah. to the music shop and get yourself a right. get yourself a, a book of yeah, and they were all so wrong. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was like uh, what? Yeah, and uh, it's like, and you could kind of figure out a lot of stuff by yourself. But you know, I remember like way heavy distortion, or you know, but wow, yeah. yeah. Where do I get one of those way heavy, heavy yeah. distortion <laughs> pedals? <laughs> but that was yeah, that I always remember that being quite because uh, you were playing in your bedroom and you were trying to get this sound and you could never get the sound that you ever wanted. How it's yeah, yeah, kind yeah. Of like, how did they, how do they do it? And, and it's a bit, it's a, it's almost like hamstringing yourself buying a tab book because you put the money down, mm. so you want to believe that it's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you get a certain point until w the point that it's not right anymore, yeah. and you're like, well, I'm playing that and it's not right. And so then you start to you forget, like, oh no, it must be me. You question <laughs> yourself like yeah. more than you question the book, but you, you know, realize that oh, it wasn't just me. <laughs> you need to be given the license to say, okay, well, it doesn't sound right to me. So what can I do that makes it sound more yeah. right? Than... A friend of mine used to work in you know, Hobgoblin music. Yeah. Um, used to work there, and David Gray came in once, was like looking through. There was one of his tab books there, oh. picked it up, was flipping things through it, went, that's wrong corrected it and and sort of just left it there wow. and then somebody came in to pick up the book and yeah. picked it up went through and someone's written in here and then my, my mate was just like no it was actually David Gray he he like put the proper thing down yeah. don't want it it's like someone's written in it <laughs> so the other one it's like that's the actual the, right the, the, guy. the guy that made it up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that doesn't happen every day no it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't do, they, do people sell those anymore? Because you've got like I, ultimate I, guitar tabs and websites like that. Do you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I've still I, got my, loads of mine. In fact, there are lots of them down there. I've yeah, got the whole Jimi Hendrix tab. Which hmm. to be honest, I but when's the last time you took it out? That's do you know, I've, I've never actually learned anything from it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said that. But yeah, Maybe this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mum. Um, yeah, so when did you. Did you have, like, did you join a band? Do you? Uh, yeah. Oh well, yeah. Was just teenagers, and I, I think I, I was always like the one trying to get everybody to play. Like, yeah. You play a bass, <laughs> you play the drums, and they were all. Like, mm. Yeah. But I don't know. I just had this like vision of just playing. I just wanted to play. Yeah. Um, it was like the most important thing. And this is and, uh, at school? Or? At school, yeah. School was, oh, you know, forget about it. It's just guitar. But, yeah. yeah. And were, did um, you have like a music teacher who was a kindred? I did, actually. Yeah, she was fantastic. Uh, Miss Briggs. Yeah, she um, she was great. She was a, like, just go and go make stuff up. Yeah, it's just all, just, you don't have to play like that. Just go yeah, and make it cool. up. Yeah. Because um, with, with your guitar style I guess I mean you I, I, I bet anybody that I could tell it's you <laughs> you know over any anybody else you've got yeah. a re really distinctive yeah. style which I suppose it comes about partly by not having any lessons no so lessons being, yeah it's basically yeah. just just go and make it up mm. I mean because you don't even tune a guitar normally do no you always pick guitars up it, after you've used them it's like what is this what yeah. tuning no, no, is this nobody ever <laughs> understands it to me it <laughs> makes perfect sense yeah. but, but uh, like a standard tune guitar doesn't make any sense to me in mm. my, like, in the way I think about the yeah. song. Or the second, it's an open tuning. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there. So when did you start? When did that become a thing? I mean, was that straight away? Almost like drop D, right? Yeah. Then further. So what made you think that that was acceptable, but getting to the point in the tab that was wrong wasn't? <laughs> God, could you imagine I, John's tabs? I, I think, yeah. I think <laughs> Paul um, Bugger is a I think, I think, I don't know. I, I, so I, I don't just, want to put you on the spot. It's it, just interesting. It that... just didn't make any sense to to be in a in my you know in my mind that that yeah. would be a. I can't make anything easily with this. No, nothing. So nothing. I'm make and it easier. Why, why am I? doing this shape when I can just do that and mm. then it's kind of making 
whatever is in my head yeah. easier to get out. Mm. Yeah. Rather than any kind of laziness in terms of learning. Yeah. So it was uh, part yeah. of least resistance. Yeah. Yeah. And it was... But like, you know, the kind of... I've always mostly played in uh, two pieces or so without bass players, mm. so I've always had to fill in that bottom end. So with the tuning down, it's... I yeah, do yeah, like yeah. a constant thumb action with a... Um, mm. Yeah, with some treble. So, yeah, so you, you've, got, <laughs> you've got something that needs to be done. <laughs> yeah. And that yeah. means that you can stop thinking about that hole that needs to be filled at the yeah. bottom end. Yeah. And it just means that you can get the song out that you that you yeah. potentially mm. you can get out yeah. rather than worrying about the mechanics of uh, you know how I need to get that finger really down there to play that note yeah. in that chord. Yeah. And it, um and a la a, in a, in a way a, a lack of understanding mm -hmm. or not trying to understand what I'm doing just just doing it rather than yeah oh, well I can't go from here to here because that doesn't make sense technically that's mm. never yeah. been a part of it is there something that, something that is kind of when you go to like I went to the guitar institute and and so you you learn a certain way yeah. so then it took me a long time to kind of unlearn looking at a fingerboard is just like you yeah. have to do it in shapes you yeah. have to do it in shapes yeah. that's the, that's the rules yeah. Um, I, I, yeah I think I think I I started playing the the, the flute in primary school jazz flute I hope. jazz flute yeah crossed my leg over straight away and um, <laughs> and uh, that was so regimented yeah that with the guitar I wanted it can be this that's a freedom of yeah. of expression, I guess. Mm -hmm. Rather than going C C A. Does it? You know, it's... Does the flute kind of trigger different visual things in terms of how you actually get notes out than a guitar does? A flute. Like, like when we when we were talking to Tim, he said he always goes back to the piano in terms of how notes relate to one another in a chord or in a scale or something yeah, like that. Yeah. On a flute, I mean, I don't play any wind instruments. Yeah. It just seems baffling, like so many different finger positions to get it, different notes, whereas on a guitar, at least it's kind of re related linearly. It's, it's quite physical in the in the sense of, yeah, it's on the fret. It's yeah. quite, um, I mean, I, I play clarinet quite a lot now, and that is the, I always see it as, as a single, guitar string with a bit of a fuzz on it or something and yeah. just going up and down that and that's how I see the okay and the the tone of the the reed is I'm always trying to kind of emulate that with a guitar sound in that kind of yeah. sense yeah. Um, but I think about everything in terms of guitar these days really even when I play keys it doesn't really make sense to my that's interesting like, so is it is it because you've spent so much time with the guitar that's yeah a comfortable place where yeah. you don't really have to think about anything yeah, yeah. and all it, everything is slotted into place when you think of it on the guitar and therefore yeah. you relate everything back to that yeah in terms of octaves in terms of fifths and mm. things like that and whereas it kind of makes sense on the piano but it doesn't I find it quite frustrating to play the keys actually because I can't. It's not natural. I can't get it out enough to. Well, give me a few hours. I'm kind of alright, but. Um, it doesn't flow out because the technical part of it is isn't not advanced there. enough. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's making a block between. Yeah. What you want to get out yeah. and actually yeah. making the noise. You need to tune the piano differently. Yeah, yeah. I, I would if I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, going back to the to the Radiohead thing, I think there was. I think Johnny Greenwood had a piano tuned in microtones or something did mental. He? Did he? Right, and yeah. someone sat I'm down and was like, yeah, I'm not playing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another level yeah. of yeah, yeah. weirdness. Yeah. I had an interview with him and it was Adam Buxton interviewing him, with Johnny and He's Colin. He's really good at interviewing. Yeah, really good. And, uh, and Johnny was saying about... I think it was for OK Computer, there was certain synth... No, no, past that, so like the Kid A thing. There's certain synth noises that he wanted to get out, but um, he he wanted to make make it. So he built 
the so modules of these things, yeah. yeah. And then people coming over to me, it's like, you, you know, there's a plug in for that, we could do it on a computer. It's like, I don't want to do it like that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I want to make it, and all it does is goes, ooh. <laughs> yeah. That's, but it's, it's about all of, you know, what you end up playing on it is not just that, it's all of the stuff that feeds up to that point, mm. you know. So all of the research that he did to decide what he was going to make and then the process of making it and all of the mistakes that he experienced and overcame making it and then he decides what to play, all of that feeds into what he's going to play. Mm. And, and, you know, you don't necessarily get that unless you've been through that process. Yeah, you but think it's just a... It's just, yeah, it's one note. It, it isn't. I mean, that sounds kind of pseudo-deep, but it it completely is. And, it, you know, that all feeds into this side of, you know, pickups and everything, What what's acceptable, what isn't acceptable, what is even coming out of yeah. you to commit to tape or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a very fine line. Of, it's Between clever and stupid. Yeah, and, and it's all about... You know, where your head's at with, with the and how comfortable you feel with that and yes. especially in recording sense that's a whole other and it took me years to kind of figure out that it was totally different to live and, yeah. and you approach things in a different way And but in a recording studio or just generally recording it's all about headspace and what you're like, like for instance I'll just like pull on my pedal board apart and, mm. and feel happier with all the pedals kind of like strewn about the room and mm. and and it's exactly the same but there's something about all yeah. the different yeah. it's not all mashed together no. it's separated and yeah you can kind of yeah yeah think about things separately and take things out when you don't need them and yeah less is so much it's cliche isn't it but it is every time less is more yeah, that more russell more. from block party yeah. did the same thing i mean he's has massive, massive yeah. pedal boards, but yeah. in the studio he would just string together the pedals that he, that he wanted for that, that part. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a task. <laughs> With his board. Yeah, I know. <laughs> is it huge? Is it? Is it? Oh my goodness! The oh, last right. was the last one you made. They had like some sort of radio transmitter on it or something as well. <laughs> Do you have to notify the power company when it's turning on? It, it was. It actually has latency on it. That board. Really? It's got so many digital pedals in it. He was saying the other day that he actually has, he plays naturally, he plays ahead. ahead. So that he's playing in time. So what's coming out is in, in time. Yeah. It's, 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 it's bonkers, isn't That's, it? Yeah. yeah, it is pretty insane. So um, when when did you start sort of actually performing? In, um, did, those, did those school bands? Yeah, ever? those school bands. Yeah, that, that was the. At school or? At school, we had like a lecture theatre. We and we'd, all, we'd have to do like performances in front of right. the class. And I'd be so nervous, so nervous. And then we did like a school concert. And then, and then I think we, and then I had a gig when I was about 16 or something. At a venue called, I think it's called the Alcatraz. It was like where all the covers, local covers bands played, and we, I think we had to play a cover to to kind of right. justify us being there, and I yeah petrified, and um, how did that go? Yeah, we were fantastic. No, we were <laughs> <awful>. <laughs> lived up to all my expectations. expectations. I think I was just so depressed <laughs> because it was so awful. I think, yeah. but I think but, that's yeah. something that we want to communicate. Yeah, by this is that. The first gig probably it's gonna be will awful. be terrible, yeah. and if it isn't, just wait for the next one because yeah, that it, really it, is. There is going to yeah. be. I mean, I have terrible gigs now. I will in the future, and I've had so many. You know, it's part and parcel. And it's for part, and you you learn. You can't. It's 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 such a learning curve, mm. and don't be afraid to make mistakes. I think is, well, make better. as many as you can. Yeah. I think. Um, what do you say? An educated mistake or something, or you, it's the le you learn from it basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's it's music, isn't it? It's it's meant to be free and mm. and, and you know, people are so critical of people when they're on stage, and I, f I find that quite a bitter pill to swallow when that that person doesn't actually get up and. Mm. Do yeah. it themselves yet has an, has this negative opinion on 
somebody who's just trying, you know. Yeah. So yeah, you're yeah. talking about kind of reviewers. Reviewers or just general general yeah. punters, you know. It's, That's it's, a, a review headspace is a Mm. Of won't, maybe won't get into that, but yeah, that's a bad, very bad uh, road to go down. If you, if but you, if you've if you've been up there, then you understand that you can just have a really bad. You can night. have a really bad night. It's it can be it can be you, it can be your equipment, it can be just not interacting with with the audience. Could or, be the thing that you ate two hours before, which didn't yeah, quite agree with, with you, you, or the you you just had your you tax bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like it's a bad day at the office. Yeah, and everybody in yeah. any industry will have those, right? But you're in Unfortunately, such a, you're in the fishbowl. Yeah, with people in a, watching with, you. With, with the really hot lights on you, sweating, thinking everything's terrible. When, and then somebody comes up to you after and goes, oh, that was such an amazing show. And you're like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Is there something wrong with you? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. really, but, I'm deaf. Yeah. <laughs> ah, makes sense. I, did, I had to do a, a solo <laughs> gig where all, all, of the, <clears throat> all of the gigs I'd done with this music was with another four people. I had to do it on my own. Yep. Uh, it was at the 12 bar. So oh, that's wow. a bizarre, bizarre, bizarre. Yeah, I mean, everyone's there. like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No yeah. pressure, but yeah. I'm standing here. Is that what you're playing? You're playing, because there's the split level, wasn't it? So you're playing, your head was playing to people's yeah. feet, and then there was people looking up at you there. Yeah. I, re I really like that place. And man. I just forgot all of the words and the chords and everything. <laughs> and the, but yeah. the, like there yeah. were two or three other bands playing and they said oh that was amazing it's really really great and i was just i, just, I wanted to go and hide and never ever see anyone again yeah. but it's you, what people in the audience are expecting is yeah. very different yeah and what they experience as well yeah. is very different from yeah. what you everything kind of slows down so slow and every mistake is magnified hugely mm -hmm. and, yeah. it, and it, that's something to learn yeah you know, when, when you're performing. I, I, I often, if I don't go on stage for a few weeks, I often forget what it's like to go on stage. Yeah. And when you have that crazy adrenaline rush, and it's how you deal with that rush. Ride the wave. Ride that wave, yeah, exactly that. And I I often scare myself with it because I'll you know have a few weeks off and then go back out again. I'm like, oh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot how how intense this is. Um, but when a couple, say if I'm on a on a tour and like by the third night I'm riding the wave quite nicely. Yeah. yeah. But um, the, when I do when I do like spot gigs, as in just you know, mm. I'm like, oh, oh, oh god, yeah, it's and it's it's overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And before I go on, I'm I am a nervous wreck. I am, you know, I can't Isn't quite. And if I'm not nervous, I try and make myself nervous. Cause I'm, <laughs> I, I should that's be normal. nervous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I'm not nervous, there's something wrong. Yes, yeah, there is something yeah. wrong. Therefore, I am nervous. <laughs> is, I mean, do you have any, like, a, a routine that you sort of, things that you do before you get on stage? Yeah, I have to I go and have a few minutes by myself. Yeah. And go out of my, like, I can't go from a conversation. I, I mean, I have done that, and I've got on, gone on and been like, "What?" I have to have five minutes by myself just to sink into that performance mode, and then get on, yeah, and do it um, with a whiskey and a bottle of water. And I'm quite happy then. Yeah, not a water and a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Something depends on little, 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 little tot of water and a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's fine then. A straw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just so I don't have to bend down. Yeah. <laughs> right, right next to the microphone. In, the <laughs> uh, in, in my limited gigging experience, when you... when The more confident you are, the more the audience will enjoy the gig. Mm. So it doesn't... It sort of doesn't matter how badly you start something if you if it's a calamity you just say okay psh, let's start again and yeah. if if the audience realize that there's something that's gone wrong yeah. and you're and you're okay with it and it's like ah, you know it's cool yeah, then, i mean some of the best gigs i've i've seen are when people have cocked something up and they've gone ah oh, sorry about that <laughs> <sighs> yeah Massive show, and they're like, eh, well, yeah, yeah, sorry, hang on, and we're just, just give us a, yeah. And I, for, for years, I'd be, I'd, I would fear those mistakes mm. so much that, um, and I realize it just doesn't 
doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't. It's like it's almost like the performer steps out of the TV screen yeah. into the yeah. audience. Yeah. Space. So it links links you yeah. more because yeah. you realise that they're human. Or yeah. Maybe, you know, like, uh, I saw Bat for Lashes at um, Union Chapel, and she was just amazing. And she did this. Um, I think it's a carpenter song, and she started it off playing on the keys, and she and just went. Oh shit, that's so wrong. Sorry. <laughs> it was like, yeah, and everybody was like, it just just warm warmth to it so much yeah. because she was so funny about it and uh, just fell on her sword so gracefully and mm. and um, yeah, I don't, th- don't think and I, was, I think I saw Pixies at Reading Festival headlining and then they came back on for their encore or and. They were playing this song, and I'm like, oh, we don't. just give us a moment. We're not sure how this one goes, I can't quite remember. <laughs> and they had to confer with themselves, and then we're like, don't worry, it's just like a rehearsal in front of a few thousand people. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I saw exactly the same thing yeah. blur at Brixton Academy, I think. Yeah. And Graham forgot the chords to the yeah. song that they were supposed to be singing. Yeah. So yeah. Alex was said, oh, it goes A, and then D, and then, and then he was like, oh, yeah, okay. And that once you the script started running in his head, he was yeah. fine and could yeah. keep going. But yeah, and it, it suddenly the gig stepped up a level when that happened. Yeah, and so often that's yeah. the case. Yeah. Whereas if you just kind of your world implodes as a performer, yeah, then the gig can get worse. And that has happened to me as well. I, I had a I remember this um, playing a, a festival in Manchester, and the power went down. And the, and the the PA was ridiculous anyway. There was just there was absolutely no monitors, and I was having a terrible show. And the power went down, and I was just like, Wah! I just walked off, and I was so annoyed. But looking back, I, I think I I should have just been like, eh, yeah, mm. yeah, sorry. You you know you drive like probably six or seven hours to get there, and then you dealt with you know. It's just problem after problem. Yeah, and it, it's it's hard, but um, I think I mean it does matter. It matters more than anything, but I think it's how you deal with it. Yeah, or and that really matters. Yeah, I think that is the most important thing, and it's okay to make a mistake. Yeah. Nobody's gonna. No one's gonna die. Oh, you missed that C sharp. Yeah, four pixies have died because of you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he smiled. Terrible, terrible look. Four music examiners have died. Yeah, yeah. 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 keep making them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you said about riding the wave, and it's all you kind of yeah. like the I suppose anxiety. Yeah, uh, is it kind of go not goes away, but it's less of an impact. Is that yeah. how about the other side of it? It's like if when you're going up and you're doing you're on tour for example, mm-hmm. so you've got, you've you've had the nervous bit at the beginning, and you're kind of you know on it's just like rinse and repeat, rinse yeah. and repeat, gig, yeah. gig, 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 and then it yeah. stops. Yeah. What's it like that side of it once it's all gone? I find it really hard to deal with, mm. um, and I, I've kind of you develop coping mechanisms to deal with it and some of them have worked and some of them really haven't and um but when you come home and you 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 don't have that adrenaline kick every night and you haven't got an adoring um crowd in front of you yeah and who even adore your mistakes yeah (laughs) You know, or not. <laughs> uh, the, the, and and you you um. Yeah, I've I, I've had real issues with that in the past. That that dealing with, I mean, I, I come home and I'm more or less a vegetable. You know, it's, mm. it's like, but the wor- I think the worst thing you can do is stop. You have yeah. to keep going, and you have to keep busy, and you have to keep um, talking to people. Yeah, and. Um, uh, y- y- yeah, it, it's a it's an absolute it's a tidal wave, and then 
quite the reverse. Mm -hmm. It's it's because um, you're you're living living off your adrenaline. You have no. You're exhausted because you're travelling so much and um, not sleeping enough. Not sleeping yeah. enough. You don't get enough rest, and you know you're just you in the back of a van going go, <laughs> for for hours. Um, and then you load your gear in, and then you you know you're doing a sound check, and then you have a couple of beers and relax, and you know it's quite a safe you know um, mechanism. Mm -hmm. And then um, you come home and you really do fall apart. And and I, I I I myself struggle with it. I know so many other people who struggle with it. Um, I know people who book themselves in a hotel for a couple of uh, nights before they go back to their partners, wives, whatever. Really? Yeah, just to just to decompress. Really. Um, I think I think. You know, I mean, like in the past, I've just drank too much, just to kind of compensate for that. You, you know, it's like it's almost like you've lost the part of you. It's, yeah, it's yeah, really, yeah. Like it's empty, and you, you know, every time you. Um, Come back, you think oh, I'm going to deal with this better. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to go for a run, or and that is the best. That, that, yeah. that is the best thing you can do is exercise and eat healthily and not drink too much. But the men, your mental health is horrendous, and yeah. you, or mine, you know, it's not it's not great when I come back off tour, and you know, and you do everything to excess and just to compensate for that yeah. adrenaline. And it's, yeah, it's very hard to come down. Mm. I think. In interestingly, on that on that kind of, you know that the best thing to do is to go and exercise and yeah. eat sensibly and not yeah. drink too much. Yeah. When on that podcast that we listened to the other day, when you lack enough sleep, and mm. it doesn't even need to be a huge amount. Yeah. The part of your brain that control puts a break on your emotional center. Yeah is basically just taken out of the equation. Yeah. So your emotions are running everything. Yeah. yeah. And when you get back off too, I mean, you've lacked <laughs> a massive <laughs> your hours and hours and hours of sleep. And yeah. that's why it's so mm. difficult mm. to be yeah. able to do the sensible thing because yeah. your emotions are just running everything. Yeah. And you're so exhausted. It's like the last thing you want to do is go and... Do something difficult. Do something exercise. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to lie on the sofa. Um, Cuddle myself and watch Netflix or something, you know. Yeah. But that's not that's not good. Um, you got to interact. I think is because I find it so hard to get back to um, normal life, mm -hmm. as in just going to the shop and you know Tesco and going you know, yeah. milk and bread and. <laughs> do, you, do you find yourself able to talk about? how completely ridiculous you're feeling to anyone that you've got to kind of be around. Yeah, I mean... I and do they, do they get it? Do you find that they get it if you manage to do that? And does yeah. that make it easier? I, I have, yeah, my, my wife is very understanding. I mean, she's toured herself, so she kind of that helps. Gets, it. gets the, the high and the low, and then all my friends are in very much similar situations. Um, this place helps, yeah. Monty's. Um, I think because we've all done it ourselves and we all have had those issues. Yeah. And we can talk about them quite openly. And I think that is that is the key as well because, yeah, it, you know, like stuff. I've worked in other places where it's like just, you, you know, yeah. you'd be classed as mad, you know. Um, it's, yeah, the shared experience thing. Mm. When we were talking to Tim, it struck me as well that the, the kind of motive, not just the motivation, but the, the thing that the fire that keeps every, or the fuel that keeps everything going is doing things together yep. with other people who are mm. passionate about the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And then the shared experience just grows that and grows that and yeah. grows it. And it's yeah. the same thing you know, keeping you going after you've come up off the top of that yeah. mountain. Yeah. You you need other people with shared experience to get you through you because do. they kind yeah. of understand 
that you're feeling completely irrational and broken. It, it, is, and it is irrational. It is completely irrational in the way you're reacting to yeah, things yeah. around you. And, mm. and um, yeah, I think, I think I, for me anyway, I need, a, I need a focus. I need a, like, yeah. for instance, like fixing an amplifier or I need, I need to engross myself in something that isn't my own... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy thoughts, so you're not, basically. Yeah, you're not thinking, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, or or talking about something, or da, 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 but I have to, and social interaction as well, because, um, like years ago, I'd I'd be when I first, in a sense, became a, a, a like a professional musician. As I I had a bit of money Someone from. Someone actually pays you. For somebody somebody yeah. pays me for this, and you're mad. And I was like, yes, it's all I've ever wanted, and and I. Quick, it quickly, um, like all I'd done is work like 40, 50 hours a week, you know, since forever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I didn't have to go to work. Um, and I had like weeks to kill before the next show or recording session. And, and I, 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 yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't good for me. It wasn't, mm. it was, um, and I think that is the hardest thing to occupy yourself in the downtime, that's the. That's, yeah, yeah. I think that's where a lot of the problems uh, start and and lie. Yeah, yeah. You know, I find that even, like, say I go on holiday or yeah, I'm even, not very good at that. Yeah. Even at weekends, it's like because <laughs> yeah. I mean I'm fortunate enough to be doing something that I love to do. Yeah. So my Mondays for me is just I I no Sunday night dreads I don't have. Yeah, yeah. And then it comes to Friday and I love, you know, weekend time with the family, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. But then I go back to my house. Yeah. I've got two kids that don't do what I ask them to do. <laughs> which is a kid they're kids. They're yeah, not going yeah, yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah. And you know there's 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 I don't really have a schedule or you know that kind of yeah. stuff and it's take it's I'm finding it so weird mm -hmm. because I only recently kind of got my weekends back after stopping gigging and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so even then I would, you know, here Monday to Friday and then I'd be off Saturday and then yeah. I'd basically survive Sunday and then r rinse and repeat. Yeah. But it's that downtime is, yeah. Yeah. Is, is a dangerous thing. I mean, when, very... I, when I go on holiday, I know that it's like first, the first three, four days, yeah. I'm a nightmare. Yeah. It's because I'm just like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Come on! And everyone else yeah. just wants to chill out, and yeah. then there's me, not wanting to. <laughs> I think it's quite an art, relaxing in a mm. sense. It's quite a. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm not very good at it. Um, yeah, I have to be busy. I'll say. Kind yeah. Of, uh, yeah, with my, yeah, I get back and yeah, my kid, you know, she's like. And, uh, yeah, that 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 I find that really helps actually. Oh yeah, because yeah. you've got a, again a, a focus to. But, um, yeah, that that downtime is is dangerous. Downtime is not downtime sometimes. No, downtime. <laughs> yeah, holidays. I'm a nightmare on holiday. I can't yeah. can't relax. How about you? It it takes a while, definitely. Mm. It's a bit like getting into a swimming pool that's not warm enough yeah you know you got to ease yourself in and then once you're in past it's the mid you, you, yeah you can't exactly yeah, yeah but once that, <laughs> past that midriff yeah, yeah yeah um yeah definitely and it, it, a week's not really long no. enough because mm. you get it takes you three four days yeah. to kind of yeah. get used to the pace or you yeah. know where your head is and interacting constantly with the rest of your family yeah and then if it's only a week, then you're thinking, oh, I've got to go back to work or I've got to go back to do this and blah, blah, blah. Whereas if you've got 10 days or if you're fortunate enough to have a couple of weeks, mm. then you can, you actually, or I find that I actually relax yeah. properly for those next sort of three, four Is days. It's sort of that middle magic period where you actually completely down until yeah. you realise that things are coming back around yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and wind it back yeah. up. And you feel more exhausted than when you... In, when you left <laughs> yeah, yeah I spent how much to yeah, feel like this yeah. getting on the flight and you're like oh, I'm so tired <laughs> yeah man it's a it's a crazy thing um how do you see sort of long like long term plans do you have any can you do you have an idea of what you would like to do sort of you know, if you were when you're like, I don't know, 60, 70, 
look back and be like, I've done this, that, and that, or... I mean, Other than just having paid your mortgage off. Exactly, yeah, yeah, sorry, I should have. <laughs> that, yeah. that would probably be when I'm 85. <laughs> yeah. but, um, I mean, much of the same, I think. Really? I'm not, I'm not, I'm pretty content. On the, on the right path. Yeah, I mean, it took a while to get here, mm. and there was a hell of a lot of diver, diversions. But, um, yeah, I've never been more content with my day-to-day that's a good place to be man existence I guess but you know for a long time I wasn't like like happy you know your job and who you work with and um, your home life and yeah that that's but yeah, yeah if you could but um, yeah it's a very convoluted way of getting to where it got to but, <laughs> but uh, yeah it's it's all very much the same with the paid off mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> if I could only have that, I'd be happy. I mean, I'd, I mean, I'd, I'd like to. You know, I think every. I mean, if I could tell my eighteen-year-old self what I'm doing now, I think I think, I think the eighteen, eighteen-year-old would be. Be like. Okay. That's, yeah. That's but to me, it's just like it's happened so. It's incremental. So, so mm. gradually that it's it's not really a. It, it's very hard to appreciate what you have. I think. Yeah. Because it's, you know, you work so hard to get it as well that it. Um, that that statement just there, you work so hard. You hear that so often in interviews with people, yeah. and. I think it just washes over people because they hear it so much. Yeah. But that I work so hard. Yeah. Means a massive, massive I amount. Think, I think I it mean, does. It's like yeah. Every day I'm slogging away. Yeah. On some aspect of trying to get to this place where I'm going. For this little step. Constantly, forward. constantly, constantly. Yeah. yeah. And you get that little step up. Yeah. After a month or a year of it, it, slogging away, and it is that little step, isn't it? And so it's, I've it's, worked so hard means a huge, huge amount. Yeah, and, and, and it's 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 almost it's not it's not a throwaway statement, but it almost comes across a bit like a throwaway statement. Yeah. and and it doesn't that doesn't punch into your eighteen year old self's yeah. head no. to say, look, do you realise how much hard work you are going to have to put in to get? To this point. to this point because yeah. it is no one's going to hand it to you not not at all I mean yeah. it's it's and you get knocked back so many times as well it's within music I mean it's I mean it's just mm. it's like a sheer dogged determination and belief without being like an egotistical maniac that that it's you know and you I think you have to realize that not everybody's going to like your output. And yeah. that's okay. And that's okay. As long as you're happy with it. And if something doesn't happen, then, you know, but you're happy with it, then I think, I think that's... Yeah. I think that's number one. You have to be happy with, with your own work. Yeah. And... Um, that's, a, that's a kind of mental space to get yeah. into... Hugely. Before you do anything I, I else. Think, I think you've got to have such thick st- skin. And I don't... I'm, I mean, I get, you know people you know, negative comments and negative and you, you know you have all these positive ones but you seem to dwell on that one negative yeah, always, yeah. always comment and you know, I'm like why have you why do you, what do you mean or and mm-hmm. um, and it is that sheer like it's just like it, it's, you know keep on keeping on it's like a um I think you can like I've never had any like uh any idea of like grandeur or riches or uh, it's just purely I just want to do music and yeah. that is if I can make some money off it Bones. wow yeah you know because there's so many people who don't and yeah. and you know it's and it seems like that drive to put a name to it yeah. that you had that back when you just had your first guitar yeah you, know, you were in school yeah. marshalling yeah. these guys yeah. to make the noise that you <laughs> those, wanted to make those poor guys sorry about that yeah, it's uh, um, yeah. It is this constant drive to, but it doesn't mean you have to be. You know, you meet so many people, especially when you're as younger, and they'd be so 
driven and confident and they yeah. just kind of fall by the wayside because they don't get their big record deal mm. that doesn't really exist anymore straight away you know and they're like, oh well you know try plumbing instead or something I think but, it's a lot it's people yeah. in, so, sorry to yeah, okay. in, but you get lots of people this, you, you'll be at school you'll be the popular muse one at school yeah, and yeah. everyone's like oh you're going to make it yeah. you're going to be like number one and blah yeah, blah, 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 yeah. blah 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 and then it doesn't happen you yeah. get out of school yeah. the school bubble and yeah. you realise that there's a gazillion people in the world yeah. a buttload of those are trying to do the same thing and you, you haven't got the right connections or whatever. I certainly wasn't the the popular uh, music guy at school. I wasn't. Mm. I was like the, the weirdo in the corner. But I think that's, that <laughs> sometimes that gives you a bit more strength because yeah. you're yeah. you have to you've had to force your way yeah. through. You haven't yeah. been like, oh, you look a pretty face and you look sound really lovely yeah. and yeah. you know you've had to fight from that. So it's just put you in that kind of mode already. So you're not really expecting. Anything you just want to get no, somewhere? No, never expected anything really. And um, it's still, yeah, it's such a tough industry. It's ridiculously mm. tough. And, and there's so many people who want to do it and they want a slice of the pie. And that's, uh, you have to do it for yourself, I think, is the bottom line. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. I think it's the same with, with most Things, anything that anything. you you want to do if you yeah. want to make something yeah yeah then you have to believe in what you're making yeah, yeah. i imagine it's the same with exactly class yeah. Yeah. exactly yeah i mean i i've used this i've bored you with it i know whatever really with it it's like whole kind of spaghetti bolognese thing it's like everybody everybody, everybody <laughs> can make a spaghetti bolognese yeah. you know everybody would make it slightly differently you know so it's like there's a People tell me all the time. There's a bit. There's loads of people making pickups. Why? Yeah. Why are yours better? And it's just. It's just. I make. I when I'm developing the pickups, I'll make it, plumb it into a guitar, play something, and if I instantly don't like it, then I just start over. Yeah. It's because it doesn't. I'm not going to sit there and analyze it, which is what I used to do when I started, and like think, oh, you know, Brian down the road, he might like this because it's got a little bit of this or that. I, start, I don't like it. Yeah. Um, for like this spaghetti bolognese I mean so your mum might make one with like a bit of I don't know chilli sauce in it which is like amazing and yeah. my mum doesn't like it's got bland taste or whatever and I don't like I prefer your mum's one and like you know that yeah. on and on and on mm. um, and it, I think you have to if there are lots of people making spaghetti bolognese <laughs> you could you know if you've got two axes you sort of want to be running along the edges to make yourself distinct yeah. you've got to find the corners of the graph because otherwise you're fighting with everyone else down by the origin and yeah. you, you have a really difficult time saying look I'm, I'm yeah, doing I'm, this I'm and I'm you here. should choose me because yeah. this is if you like this then yeah. come and try me yeah. rather than and I, th all these I other think it's people. just um, sticking to your guns as well yeah, yeah. And I've seen so many you know, band analogy, and like, they've gone, this band's bigger than mine. We'll sound a bit like that. Yeah. And then <laughs> this this that. band comes up, and then they would sound a bit like this. Mm. And that that happened a lot when I was younger as well. That you could see people, you know, Arctic Monkeys might have come out, and they're like, yeah, everybody like sounding like Arctic Monkeys, the Libertines, and everybody sounding like Libertines, and yada yada yada. And they were good because they sounded like they sounded. Because they sounded like they themselves, yeah. And Radiohead yeah. are great because they sound like themselves. Yeah, I mean, you still voice. can't you still can't pigeonhole uh, other than saying you sound, might sound a bit like Radiohead. <laughs> yeah, it's like a genre all of, all of itself. And it? they they definitely have um, influences, and um, particularly the Pyramid song sounds a bit like uh, a European piano trio I can't remember who it is now but it sounds really like that but Tom stole it made it his own and then put the vocal over the top of it and it's suddenly it's a radio head because they've got this DNA which is in every song yeah and it, it's all pervasive yeah. so every song has that and it's got so much of them in it that any influences are kind of drawn in and kind of chewed up and then and then back out as as, the, as them yeah yeah that's yeah yeah that's what we all strive for uh, i guess yeah i think it's, it's i think everybody has an 
obviously we all have influences, but it's 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 mixing them up up enough to put something out that is that is you, yeah, and that is um, individual enough to be recognised. I think. Yeah. 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 Where are we? Where are we? Well, we kind of not really followed this really at all. <laughs> We're kind of down here. I've had too much caffeine. <laughs> I feel a bit like that as well. It's a fine line though, isn't it? Just being it? so close to Matt. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's his presence. Caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Maryland cookies. Ooh, cookies. Yeah. This is. Would you, would you like a Maryland cookie? I'm right, I've already had one. But, yeah. You have one. They're keto that, cookies, yeah. I mean. Do you know what? I had a pizza last night. Mm-hmm. And. I was a bit concerned that it was going to knock me out of ketosis, but still in when I woke up this morning. So, an actual pizza pizza? Was yeah, yeah, yeah. And ordered a pizza in? Or did it no, pizza? ZZ pizza. Went to ZZ because it was Deb's birthday last night, 44. Mm. Did you have a good time? Yeah, yeah, it was good. And I was, I was like, oh, well, I could have, could have the salmon thing and not eat the potatoes. And I thought, for goodness sakes, I'm just going to eat a pizza. Mm. And if it knocks me out, then it knocks me out. Was it a no carb thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, which my body is kind of doing pretty well on. And I don't know, I mean, this is probably not the place to talk about it, but <laughs> I'm going to have a biscuit. Talking of Cheers. drum roll, drum yeah. roll. <laughs> Carby, sugary carbs. <laughs> <laughs> All in one. Yeah. Um, so. You touched on it earlier. Mm. If you could say, write a letter to your like an eighteen-year-old self, sixteen-year-old self, yeah. whatever, knowing what you know now yeah. about your kind of journey and advice you would give yourself, yeah. what would you tell yourself? Just not to worry so much about anything. Mm. None of it is important. It's it's and. Just stick to your guns and, and trust your gut. Yeah. I think. And um, go your own way. It's it doesn't matter what you know, you who whoever whatever people say, it just just doesn't matter, it just doesn't you know. Don't worry about what other people think. I think it's number one. Yeah. That's a good one. Trust your gut. That's, yeah, that's, uh, and I was going to maybe qualify that, not that it's any of my business to qualify what you are going to tell your (laughs) your 18 year old self, but know what you believe and know why you believe it and then just keep following that because people are, people's opinions are always going to be, you know, opposite or not opposite, but conflicting with yours. Yes. But if you know what you believe and you know why you believe it, yeah. then that's enough to keep you going when you get a terrible review or yeah, yeah, or when you lose your record deal or whatever. If you yeah. believe what, if you know what you believe and you know why you believe it, you just keep on doing it yeah. because that's, you know, that that is what you are. Yeah, you've got to keep on doing it. Yeah, people love to poo-poo, don't they? It's yeah, a, yeah, it's a human condition. I think. It's, yeah, it's yeah. A, um, I think I was uh, I had a more of an inkling about myself when I was eighteen than I did at twenty four. Yeah, you know, because you go through that whole university thing and mm. you think, oh, I need to be this graduate professional. So, so. Possibly Oscar. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, yeah, basically, yeah. Um, I, I think, and uh, sometimes. So it's like that quote of sometimes when it feels like it's falling apart, it's actually falling into place. Mm. And I think that's that's rang very true throughout my, you know, life. <laughs> um, like everything's just gone, and then you're like, <gasps> yeah. and then you like, you know, it might be a record deal, it might be a, an agent, a publisher, or a blah 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 blah, and then it all just kind of. We get used to things, don't we? Mm. It gets comfortable. Yeah. And then when something changes, that becomes uncomfortable and you think, oh, it's the end of the world. Well, 
it's the end of my world that I've known for the last two years that or chapter. six months or whatever. Yeah. But there's going to be something else. Yeah. 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 There's always something. That's like there's always some kind of something to work towards. I think. Keep hustling. Yeah. 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 That is that is it. Isn't it? Keep hustling. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, what would you, what do you think your younger self would reply to that, or? doesn't necessarily have to be reply, but if if your younger self could see you now, what do you think your younger self would say to you? Is that what's going to happen to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's interesting because, you know, your route to success, there's that, to, I don't know where it's from, the what people think the route to success is and what it actually is. Mm. You know, there's the straight line and then there's the... It's exactly that. It, but you can't believe that you're even going to get from there to there. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what I would... That, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like... I wouldn't have thought... Could your, would your 18-year-old self believe that you would have done what you have done? And Probably not, no. 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 No, not at all. Um, no. Which is kind of cool. Which is kind of... So good, on yeah. down days, maybe that's the thing to think about. Yeah, you know. yeah. But yeah. all these things I've done. Yeah. I've done too bad. Yeah. Anyway, what's next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool, man. And on that bombshell... <laughs> Pleasure. To quote Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. thanks. John. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That was awesome.